You know what's going to be very cool? When mm. we finally invent like a little button that we put on our balls, you just <laughs> press it and you can no longer impregnate anybody. Like oh the God. best fucking thing of all time. Mm. But tell me, Dr. Hakim, would it be possible mm. for me to still like, you know, uh, how do we say, spread the juices without mm. the juices uh, of having the possibility of impregnating? Of course, yeah. The vast majority of uh, what you it, like, the vast majority <laughs> of your respect is sperm. You respected me enough to add that. Sorry, please. <laughs> no, 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 but the, yeah, it's, it's a. It may sound silly because I'm sure I'm sure there's people listening right now who are like, yeah, I want the answer. Um, vast majority of ejaculate isn't sperm. Vast majority of ejaculate is uh, prostate. Uh, piss, right? And piss, it, it's, I no, knew no, it was piss. <laughs> I, I'm kidding. I'm it's, <laughs> it's prostate secretion amongst all. There's basically three three glands um, that you have. You have a, a seminal vesicle you have the prostate and you have something called Cowper's glands um, that produce like all the fluids mix, the fluid mixtures um, and then of course the, the testes themselves which then eventually produces the sperm and the sperm is kind of like um, uh, think of it like the, the rest of the fluid is like the train tracks and the sperm is the train right you want to get the train to the destination but it's not yeah. going to get there if but it doesn't not have the, the other shit. Yeah. Okay. and that's where why your, your what's it called your prostate secretions have like fructose in it and all whole well, you know, in medical they that's made just us what fucking. We lie, that's yeah. just what we lie and say to women. Yeah. It's piss, isn't it? Like, stop fucking. It's piss, uh, dude. But... They made us. They made us sit there and fucking memorize the the like uh, chemical breakdown of, of of jizz. They're like, oh yeah, and prostate, it, it, like prostate fluid is is this much of this, this percentage of this, this percentage of this, and so on and so forth. And I'm like, uh, I I forgot all of it now, fucking, because it's useless information. But <laughs> what, what, why did we get on this topic? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. You started. Wait, I started. No, we we are all the same. We are the same people in JT's basement. Mm, I can't exactly. believe you. You keep forgetting this. You had something that you wanted to share with the class. You got like, several, several lovely things. Oh yeah, please. I have many things. I have many <laughs> things. So today I watched this uh, this Guy Ritchie movie. And no, it's not an epically cool, edgy gangster film. For some reason, he was like. Woke up one morning and was like, I'm going to make a movie about the Afghan war and about <laughs> like Afghani translators uh, and, you know, their relationship to U.S. soldiers. Like incredibly average film. It's like unironically like uh, what I feel it, it, it tried to do. It tried to do like a, 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 a woke a war pro-war movie oh from the God. sense of, of being like, you know, not at any moment questioning why are we there, but be but very intensively continuously saying, you know, not all of them are bad, bro. There's like, you know, like those Arabs, even though Afghanis mm. are not Arabs, but <laughs> obviously the movie doesn't say that, but like there's Afghanis that are nice. So, you know, we worked with the nice ones and they all hated the Taliban and we were fighting the Taliban. So that kind of twist, because they understood that uh, the twist of completely hating on it will uh, like uh, push a part of the American viewership away from watching the movie, so less money. They realized that, uh, you know, completely uh, one side choosing the, the perspective of only the Americans, Americans, Americans will allevi- uh, alienate another part of the, the viewership. So they, the, like Guy Ritchie tr- managed to, for some reason, even though he really should have stuck to very, very decent fucking gangster flicks, uh, find kind of a middle ground where uh, both a, a lib and his conservative dad can go and and enjoy a movie where a bunch of uh, Afghanis get their brains blown out of. But that led me to like a very interesting and kind of, I, th- I believe, complicated, but maybe even taboo question that I'm going to <laughs> put on the spot before oh, you yeah. right now. I'm even more ready. taboo than uh, is Jizz actually piss, which is... What's your opinion on uh, people, like, for example, when it comes to Iraq, you know, Arabs, Mm, American mm. Arabs, who, like, volunteered to serve in the U.S. Army when they went there? That Mm. fucks with my brain. I don't know, but, you know, I'm not not Arab, so I can't Mm. comment. Number one. And number two, what do you think of all, like, the people (laughs) during the invasion that, like, uh, were, like... uh, collaborated like collaborated very very yeah. intensively i'm not talking mm-hmm. i don't know like uh helping translate when they're buying a banana but like i'm yeah. talking you know the guys yeah, actually that were collaborated. With them. um you know <laughs> i don't know how i can say this without jt bleeping it so um <laughs> oh, okay yeah. uh i love how i was trying to be sensitive i was like oh mm, maybe he's no, no, gonna to come in with like no man it's uh, complicated but the no, first I think... the, the first group of people um, these people are trash. 
<laughs> and there's, but there's like, the crazy, there's, but there's crazy shit like, okay, even second, third generation, I'm like, you're, you know, at least th- mm. this might sound weird, but at least like the white guy has the excuse of ignorance, but like, you know, your parents are from there, mm-hmm. or even grandparents are from there. So, mm-hmm. like, where the fuck is your excuse? It's, 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 but, he has but, family back there, or they exa- have family back there. It's, or even it's worse, when there's like a first yeah. generation dude. Imagine yeah. you, like, imagine right now, uh, let's imagine you're from Baghdad, you emigrate to New York. York. No, mm. I, okay, let's imagine a random. You're like Parisian, and then you emigrate to to uh, Cambodia. For some reason, Cambodia starts invading France, and you're like, "Fuck sure. yeah, I'm a volunteer. <laughs> I'm a go. I'm a go. Yeah. Fuck up them Parisians and shit." Yeah. What? No, no, the, like that fucks with me. I don't know. That's Sorry, the I keep one. And me. the Please, second one on. is. Uh, every collaborator I know of is dead. Uh, every single collaborator that I had gone with him, like just whispers in the air of that this person may or may not be, had ended up dead. I think that gives you an. <laughs> I think that's the only uh, what's it called um, indication that you need about what I personally think. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think I mentioned the story. I think very early on there was a woman on our street. Actually, uh, I didn't know her very well. Um, this was the first few weeks of the of the invasion, actually, and she she started translating officially um, for for some U.S. convoy of some sort. Uh, and yeah, she didn't last two weeks. Um, and that mm. yeah, good riddance, honestly. Uh, you don't you don't collaborate with the with the invading force. Uh, I don't care what your personal motivations are. I don't care what uh, you do not absolutely do not do it. If you were gonna do it, then you do it to sabotage. Then you know that's mm-hmm. pretty. Yeah, you know, but otherwise, no. Uh, decide with the colonizer uh, against the colonized for petty fucking personal gain is is uh, no. There's more glory in uh, yeah. Well, fuck glory even. But I'm just gonna say there's more. Shut up, like honor. In, 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 in doing without but resisting the, the, the oppressor than the inverse, right? Uh, it's like collaborating with the with, with Zionist entity. Um, but this is a much, much deeper conversation for a different point. <laughs> I think this went way deeper than you're hoping for. <laughs> much more serious. No, no, than this, is this is perfect. This uh, is perfect. How about I quickly change gears about something else? Um, I, you, you got to think, you know, about my m- me and my patient sandwich eating. Uh, which you guys used to think was basically me going and raiding patient, uh, like the patient patients. rooms for the, the food that their families made them. Uh, no, no, it was. The, no, I thought you would wait, like, because, you know, <laughs> until oh, they're dead. In Iraq, they all die, like, all the time. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. And you would just go and take all the dead people's sandwiches. That's yeah. what I thought. No, 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 no. Sadly, sadly not. Uh, they, they would be much better if that was the case. No, no, we, we, these are sandwiches <laughs> that we provide for the patients. Um, I've seen something, the elusive patient yogurt around. Uh, and every once in a while, I check the same place where, you, where I go for the patient sandwiches, and they have some patient yogurt. Uh, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take me some yogurt. But uh, it's very rarely there. And I was like, what? But the patients always have it, so they must be storing it somewhere. And I finally found it. I <laughs> I finally found the chest of patient yogurt, and I started cleaning up. <laughs> oh my god! I just ate one fucking one little like vat of, of, of not vat, and that, that makes it sound bigger. One container of yogurt, not a ridiculous amount, but it's just uh, <laughs> I find it so silly that I remember I found the, the the special little compartment that they keep it in, and in the back of my mind I'm like, oh you motherfuckers, oh you shouldn't have let me find this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that was just ridiculous and how do they react afterwards when they, they realize that, that their food is gone they don't care if they, I make a big deal of it like you know joking on the podcast literally every single person I work with does the same on paper you're not quote unquote supposed to quote unquote uh, but also they're like yeah I mean if you're hungry <laughs> Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Send Nudes. Uh, by the way, stop sending me nudes. I mm-hmm. opened my Twitter fucking messages for two weeks and that's the only fucking thing I've seen there. So please, no more. Uh, mm-hmm. If you'd like to see more regular news coverage, content by myself, the Yank and the Doctor, check out First Thought on YouTube. Three times a week, all that you need to know. Don't waste your time. Anyways, we have an interesting, to say the least, bundle of news we would like to cover today. First of which is, Hakim, take it away. 
Yes, um, this is a very, very nice and, and pleasant. By the way, if, if no people haven't noticed that JT isn't with us, he's uh, he is otherwise uh, disposed, disposed, predisposed. You know what people are trying to fucking say. Um, he's busy with family, so we're taking over for now. Uh, he let us out of the basement temporarily. Anyways, the very first story that I'd like to intro is something we mentioned on first thought actually. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but uh, there's a war supposedly going on in in in, in Ukraine. Really? <laughs> I I uh, maybe maybe there's been an inkling on the news. I've heard maybe a whisper on Twitter. But uh, the thing that's been going on that has been completely silent, which I find especially telling, uh, is the massive privatization drive that's been going on in Ukraine. Now, this isn't the first time this has happened. Privatization has been kind of an ongoing project since like the 90s in Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it goes in waves, right? So it, there's like two years where they privatize a lot, and then there's like 10 years where they don't do anything. And this is just the latest episode, but it's also the deepest uh, privatization period that uh, Ukraine has had. If you're not aware of the incredibly performative and very cringe um, way that Ukraine is going about this is with the opening of the New York Stock Exchange um, a little while back, basically, uh, they started something called Advantage Ukraine, uh, where uh, Zelensky was basically uh, live streamed in uh, on a big monitor and he like ceremonially rang the, the stupid bell to open it up. And uh, yeah, he just basically mentioned how they're going to try to sell $400 billion uh, in, in, in state assets. Uh, Phenomenal. That was... Yeah, that was a little while back. Of course, this was something packaged with a lot of anti-labor um, stuff. They're like, oh, we're going to rework the country's tax system, which is or reform, reform the country's tax system, which is code for basically offsetting tax burdens onto yeah. the uh, poorest. Um, we need to establish a new and strong legal framework, which means just basically making it easier for uh, foreign investment to come in and, and exploit it. Uh, we want to uh, create favorable conditions to allow foreign corporations to establish a powerful IT presence and whatnot. Uh, so basically, again, Again, more, more, more jargon to to mean exploitation of Ukrainian uh, assets and labor. Uh, as for when it came to labor laws specifically, it's li- trying to limit um, uh, pay, li- limit off time, limit maternity leave and other benefits, limit basically protections that workers get in case they would be fired, uh, reduction of the amount of time that they have to know that they would be fired, uh, and other such protections. Uh, Anti labor uh, movement. Uh, like boost state sanctioned movement uh, against labor unions, amongst many other things. This was this happened a little while back. Uh, mo- much more recently, uh, you have a new new effort by the uh, Ukrainian government, and this effort is called privatization.gov.ua. Uh, if <laughs> I don't know how much more like mask off you can kind of get get about it, but in essence, this is an official attempt by the Ukrainian government to sell off state property through auctions through a website as if it's like fucking crypto dealing uh the they have even a seal titled this the the state property fund of ukraine um on the website and they even have a how to how to buy uh like uh guide for things being sold like they're saying there's there's an entire fucking sea trade port being sold yeah. for 184 million uh, given or even uh, the Ukrainian currency, which is fucking nothing, basically. Uh, I remember I saw one of the things being sold was a research center that was ba- bought off for like 10% or 5%, the amount that actually went up for auction. And yeah, the, it's a flea market. Totally yeah, flea exactly. Market. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the price that was actually sold off for was, uh, I think, like $7,000 or something. Like a, re- a state research, like u- university-level research. To be done. There's a grain processing plant that's being sold. I'm just going to look this up. 24 uh, to uh, USD. You can get an entire uh, an entire grain processing plant for half a million dollars. Something that was probably built in the Soviet Union for several God knows how, how much, right? Uh, with the capability of processing. But again, uh, industrial agriculture level uh, plants being sold off for genuinely pennies. That's um, literally how much a garage costs in New York. But I don't think people like people should check out the link that we will hopefully put in the description. I don't think yeah. you understand. You open this website and it looks like a, a, a website where you buy like a used car or yeah. even, or like no Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace, but there's little buildings, there's little labs, there's factories, there's uh, underground facilities. There's just like stuff like public mm. ownership. Probably there's fucking parks or something that just like listed. There's a price. You know you can. Bid as if you're bidding for a for a nice little painting that you want to put in your living room. It, it is it is surreal to witness. It, like it's absolutely incredible. Uh, it is it is genuinely. You can even get an Excel sheet 
of all the things that they try and sell off. And if you have any questions, they have a hotline, of course, uh, that you can call and, and see. And they have a very big, proud um, uh, like strip of text which says, our partners, and of course, right in the middle is US aid. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know what more you can say. Seriously, yeah, they have distilleries, they have like tire manufacture, production of uh, technical uh, something. I don't fucking know what this is even supposed to uh, produce. And by the way, just in case in case um, you missed the, the, the memo, not only is it being auctioned off, but they also have like um, 50% off, 40% off. Oh, this is 75% off. Come fucking buy it up now. <laughs> Which is, yeah. What's going to happen to the people who work in these? What's going to happen to... to, to after somebody purchases it, who knows? Absolutely. I mean, this is how privatization to an extent has always uh, worked like, but uh, this project is probably, you know, sold to mass media as um, incredibly open, incredibly mm. transparent, because look, we're putting it all on the website. Back in the day, it was always, you know, some shady deal with somebody who ended up for some reason after the internal privatization inside of the post-socialist country uh, who ended up uh, owning, for example, the factory, they would get in contact with uh, a Western entity, an Eastern entity, whoever has money, to potentially sell this thing for scraps. And very often during uh, the privatization, the intense privatization era, especially during mm. the 90s, uh, most of these people that were like selling these things for pennies were selling them not necessarily because they were stupid, but because, you know, one guy would get like 700 factories. So he would not really give a fuck about getting the best deal on all of them. He would want to get his, you know, get rid of all of this shit as fast as he possibly can in case, you know, or oh, maybe the government changes their mind on this privatization shit. And then, you know, I get fucked. It's better for the Western that I just sold this to uh, to get fucked eventually. Uh, many of these, like I would argue 95% of these, especially when we're talking about factories, are just going to remain that way after, mm -hmm. after they get scrapped for cheap metal, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> uh, <laughs> depends on, depends on uh, where the war goes. Uh, if it goes towards, you know, Ukraine side, that's what I always like to joke around with. Uh, you know, the West will want to uh, present Ukraine as a very successful project. So it's going to just completely be filled with fucking, uh, you know, skyscrapers. America, Western owned skyscrapers. If the Russians, on the other hand, win, it's going to be filled with military bases, obviously Russian military bases. So there's kind of a, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to talk in Ukrainian's name, but, uh, mm. you know, in capitalism, in a national war, to to an extent, unfortunately, there's, there is really no winning for uh, the local uh, working class. But uh, to see, you know, privatization go, uh, like it's no longer even cool. Like, obviously, privatization is such a fucked up thing. It's not cool. But it always, like, this demystified it for me, right? Because to mm. me, it was always some, like, shady backroom deals <laughs> with some tattooed out mobsters talking to, like, mm. Western or Chinese businessmen, shit like this. Here, like, this is like an auction site. Like, Bob from Mississippi can just go on this site and buy, I don't know, a big uh, restaurant in which the Ukrainian military, Soviet military used to eat uh, for, like, 50K. And he can, like, just get on a plane and go check out his, his new thing. I'm not, like, a good question to pose. Uh, probably uh, the answer would be yes. But can non-Americans buy this? I think everybody mm. can can buy this. So it would be interesting if you know some like pro-Russian groups just end up buying up like cities through the website. It would be an edgy, edgy uh, turn of events. But yeah, privatization to, to, like has influenced my life very, very, very directly. My family's mm. life uh, generationally. Uh, the house I grew up in is literally next to. A very big uh, factory which used to make uh, clothes and stuff, and now it's literally rotting, and it's kind of a home to like 200 cats. So I guess it's still nice because of the cats, but uh, it's it's very weird for my grandma to you know wake up every morning and see the place where she spent her whole career literally rotting in front of her eyes, kind of mm. a direct, not even metaphor or allegory, but a direct manifestation of everything that privatization has brought to the uh, to the fucking country. That combined with, you know, half of the, 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 the houses on the street having fucking uh, 
not having enough money to clean up uh, the fire from the bombings during that war. So combining rotting factories and uh, and half burned uh, thirty year uh, walls uh, makes me really, I guess, feel for for the Ukrainians which are getting privatized and bombed out of their asses by this or that side. So uh, you know, uh, it's it's. Uh, the, I know I'm get making it sound edgy and uh, and uh, to an extent kind of ironically funny, which I'm sorry, but privatization to such an extent it is. Uh, but at the same time, this causes so much fucking uh, suffering, obviously coupled with the physical war which is happening, that it's uh, that it's very very sad to see a country the size of I don't know fucking four Balkan peninsulas going uh, going through this and not only for Balkan Peninsula, but a country that used to be a part of a project that actually hoped to create something more than this uh, giant mall that we call modern capitalism. Mm. Yeah. And now the country has literally become a mall where almost uh, everything that is not currently being utilized by local or foreign capitalists is being turned into something which will be utilized by foreign or domestic uh, capitalists. And it's all sold as a step towards freedom and modernization. Beautifully said. Moving on to, I guess, uh, we, we, we dunked on the on the Ukrainians being cringe. Now let's talk yeah. about the Russians being fucking incredibly <laughs> cringe. In an epic, in my opinion, movie-like plot twist turn of events, Igor Girkin, which uh, is a very prominent, especially if you're in this field, a you know, uh, very prominent Russian pro-war blogger, former FSB officer, and, uh, you know, the edgiest old man I've ever seen, mm. was arrested in Moscow. Moscow for his vocal criticism of President Vladimir Putin and the military's actions in Ukraine. It seems our boys in the Kremlin are getting more easily triggered by the centers. Even ultra right wing ones such as good old fucking Igor, man. Anybody listening to this Google Igor Gherkin, he looks like exactly <laughs> what you're imagining him. Exactly. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Gherkin, Gherkin is also known, when, let's like introduce this to, I, I guess, 97% of the people listening who don't spend their life on Telegram the way I do. Uh, Girkin, also known by the alias of Igor Strelkov, literally a Modern Warfare 2 character, played a key role in helping Russia seize Crimea and was later implicated in the downing of the Malaysia Flight 17 in eastern Ukraine. The Dutch court actually had already found him guilty of mass murder and absentia for his involvement in the in the tragic incident, which, you know, claimed like almost 300 people. And as, as one of Russia's well-known mill bloggers, the 21st century for you, there's mill bloggers. I love this fucking mm. shit. A uh, group of war correspondents supporting the invasion. Girkin had uh, grown increasingly critical of the military's handling of the operations in Ukraine. And over the past few months, he took uh, his criticism to another level, openly, you know, lambasting not only the Russian state, but also uh, being very critical towards the president himself. He's a dude famous for saying, even in the first three weeks of the war, uh, the 2022 one, not the 2014 one, uh, that uh, Russia will need total 100% mobilization uh, in the country if they want to uh, not only win, but win quick. Uh, in the spring, uh, Girkin co-founded the ultra-nationalist political group. Guess what the fuck it's called, bro? <laughs> Tell us. Give me the most us. absurd, like, patriotic name. Like, I don't know, Russian Bears Strong. <laughs> no, the Angry Patriots Club. The Fuck Angry you. Patriots Club. I swear. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's called the Angry Patriots Club. And he warned Russia. Uh, mm. He warned that Russia was on the brink of severe internal political changes with catastrophic consequences. Following the brief insurrection led by Wagner on uh, June 25th, he went so far as to suggest that if Putin was not willing to take charge of war-ready conditions in Russia, he should legally transfer power to someone who could handle such challenges. Mm. Uh, however, it appears that the uh, tipping point uh, for the boys over in the Red Square was reached when Girkin referred to President Putin as, quote, a lowlife and cowardly bum in a mm. scathing post on his Telegram channel. And I'm telling you, like, th if this isn't proof that Twitter slash Telegram are sometimes the most important fronts, I don't know what will. I'm being ironic, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the vehement critique may have triggered the arrest and subsequent charge 
uh, for quote unquote extremist activity brought against him by the court of Moscow. Uh, finishing with this, a post attributed to Girkin's associates on his Telegram account indicated that the arrest coincided with a possible attempt to divide the, I can't believe I'm saying this, angry Patriots Club due to differing opinions about the Wagner Rebellion and its implications for Russia. His associates argued that Girkin's arrest was a result of the Ministry of Defense asserting control after the Wagner uprising granting the army's command greater political leverage to suppress opponents in the public sphere. Also Navalny who everybody's like oh no he's not an ultra 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 far right guy mm. immediately expressed support for Girkin and said uh, that he is also a political prisoner just like himself. Uh, but yeah, angry patriots, arrests over telegram posts, dudes with mustaches. Now this is <laughs> fucking Russia, baby. Yeah, exactly right. It's like the 90s all over again. I love it. Uh, and God knows what, what will come of this. <laughs> Absolutely. I just hope no matter what happens, they keep the mustaches around. Yeah, exactly. Imagine a mustache Putin and a mustache Zelensky just sort uh, of rubbing each other off the fucking immediately <laughs> rule 34 that shit probably exists. oh lord i don't want to see either of them i'm sorry um <laughs> <laughs> likewise moving on let's move from i don't know one war zone to another i guess uh we're going to discuss what's going on in israel recently or the illegal settler colonial military occupation much more accurately and appropriately if people haven't been keeping up basically there have been massive protests in going on in in that um illegal settler colonial state um for months now because of judicial reform that the far-right government uh, of israel currently is trying to pass uh essentially um or i guess uh it has been passed at this point, um, and the, the, this is where lots of the, 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 the um, protests are emanating from. Uh, this particular law limits some of the powers of the C Supreme Court uh, in relation to the government, uh, particularly the executive side of the government. Um, what this means is all the policies that the government wants to push aside can be, or excuse me, push through, can occur at a much faster rate. There aren't as many hurdles to, uh, and many circles to jump through. Uh, and the biggest hurdle, of course, is the ability of the Supreme Court within Israel to basically say no to veto uh, the passing of a law or an executive decision based on it being quote unquote unreasonable now how they determine what unreasonable is there's an entire fucking discussion about that we don't need to go go over it right now but this is very clearly uh, an attempt by the far-right government uh, and particularly the the current prime minister uh, Netanyahu to uh, an attempt by him and, and his government to overhaul the, ju the judiciary to try to essentially consolidate power underneath his far right wing uh, to be able to pass all the things that they want to pass much more quickly. And 98% of the things that they want to pass is just more oppression uh, against Palestinians. Um, mm -hmm. They want to support more building of, um, uh, of uh, illegal settlements. They want to reduce protections for Palestinians, including those who are quote unquote Israeli citizens increase basically militarization of their communities uh, amongst many more other unpleasant things as a result of this particular i guess facade of israeli democracy israel has never been a democracy first of all it's a, if you even want to name it something it's still at the end of the day a bourgeois democratic setup but nonetheless you cannot be in a country where you're outnumbered by the palestinians there and okay oh they're not in the borders of israel proper so technically it's not as if a bullshit if they're under your military occupation then they are counted within those borders and if these people are not allowed to vote or do not have the same say, then you're not a democracy. It's as simple as, and that's even by the basis of liberal democracies, not even uh, proletarian democracy. Uh, regardless, there is a lot. Uh, there are di many different political currents within the country, and many of them disagree with this particular um, consolidation of power. Uh, and as a result, they've been protesting. Notably, also many people within the uh, Israeli military have been protesting, uh, including reservists who are who are basically said that they will refuse uh, to go and serve should that the, should this law remain. Uh, and this has caused a lot of anxiety for the illegal settler colonial uh, military occupation as it should because once the military is split then there's you know an opportunity there to 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 um correct uh, the issue let's just put it in that way uh that's mm. happening in palestine um several statements have been made uh all of them along very vaguely diplomatically written uh quote-unquote security issues uh the only one that i've seen which is uh much more um 
mask off. They specifically say they're like, Israel's enemies, ooh, I wonder who that could be, have convened top-level meetings to consider the turmoil and how they might capitalize on it. Um, and these are sources that were uh, basically sent fucking text to, to, to Reuters. Um, which, by the way, incredibly based, beyond based. I can't wait for them to actually capitalize on said turmoil within, but, you know, who knows? Who knows if anything of that sort will come to pass. To speak of the other side, because a lot of people have... There's very little um, that you see uh, being reported on this, but when it is reported, it's solely from the Israeli perspective. Um, the Palestinian perspective is completely and unsurprisingly uh, one of a apathy about these protests, because it doesn't matter. These are Israelis protesting about their yeah. ability to have their own little ethnostate um, that specifically excludes Palestinians and reduces their rights, um, regardless of whether this um, law remains or gets uh, revoked or whatever happens. The Palestinian lives will not improve significantly there is one minor current that says basically the supreme court was always biased against palestinians and never even barely like barely even sees them as human but at the very least there was some check and balance like checks and balances with the supreme court being able to veto things um but now that they're they're being bypassed the it's even less protection than was there before but my uh, my my rebuttal to this and this is a rebuttal of many uh on the ground in palestine is what protections were there in the first place? Um, I yeah. guess you had some administrative and, and court recourse, like judicial recourse, if you need to do something, but they were never going to rule in your favor because you have an Israeli uh, judge doing the, the, the judging um, and their law specifically written for them uh, to suit them. Again, it's a settler colonial country. It's the same with South Africa. It's the same anywhere else. So completely unsurprising. The bill, by the way, passed with the with the uh, Netanyahu's coalition, like majority voting all for it, uh, and nobody voting against it specifically because the rest of the the, the Knesset, the Israeli par parliament, um, boycotted. The, there was a walkout or sta stage the walkout, I believe is how people say it in English. Uh, this was like oh, oh great, there's a lot of like um, uh, ceremonial value to what they did, but practically they just gave the fucking passing of the law to him. Uh, so who knows if this is just a, bit, a bunch of theater or if they really intended it. Uh, regardless, the real people who are suffering in this uh, are Palestinians. The U.S. has been kind of like on the fence about it. Uh, certain American um, uh, senators and whatnot uh, and other political figures have been kind of all in on this. And a bunch of other people have mentioned worry about the the the. Uh, the shaking of Israel's vibrant 75-year-old democracy, democracy, as they claim it. I love it. Yeah, exactly right. It's, mm. it's always the same bullshit. Uh, but yeah, this is only um, this is only the beginning of many other uh, laws that have been just kind of coming down the, the pike for a while. Just recently, uh, in the past couple of years, Israel passed a law which essentially means to be Israeli, you have to be a Jew, and uh, Israel is a homeland only for the Jewish people, not a, a homeland for Jews and whoever is there. No, solely the Jewish people. So basically, it's a it's a reaffirmation of their ethnic cleansing project uh, through legal language, uh, and they defended it by saying this isn't discriminatory. That were <laughs> like everybody else will just evaporate, I guess. And my favorite part is. Uh, and again, this is, happens every single fucking time. Anytime a Palestinian farts in Israel, Israelis fucking rush the gates of embassies trying to get passports to get out of Israel as quickly as they possibly can and go back to wherever the fuck they came from originally, France or Poland or Ukraine or Russia or the US or where, wherever else, right? Um, specifically for the Ashkenazi Jews, there's a difference for, for Sephardic and, 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 and Mizrahi Jews. Um, there, are, there were people of uh, Jewish background that were originally from the land. Um, they're Jews of our countries, of, of Iraq or Morocco or Libya or Yemen. Uh, these are a completely different case. I'm speaking about, and th this is reflected in the um, in the demographics of of of, uh, of the people who always try to seek ways of leaving Israel. Uh, it's almost exclusively white, quote unquote, white European uh, ethnic origin Israelis. And hilariously, there are services within Israel that specialize specifically for getting you a passport to whatever country you're basically originally from, uh, or your ancestors, your ancestors meaning your dad or your granddad, uh, mm -hmm. were originally from, so that you can leave. And any time, for example, uh, like when the, when the uh, uprisings that happened in the early 2000s uh, by Palestinians, uh, or whenever there's any clash between Palestinian, uh, Palestinians and Israelis of any major proportion and, and there's a worry that it might break out a much wider conflict, you see plenty of this. Again, lots of particularly wealthy Israelis trying to escape as quickly as they possibly can. And I find this very interesting because no Palestinian has this ability. Palestinians, by the va by vast majority, are paperless uh, or have incredibly limited documentation that they can't use to go anywhere, um, even into other Arab countries for the most part. So again, Akiv kind of gives you an idea of who really belongs to the land <laughs> and who doesn't. Yeah. Um, 
But Israel anyways, yeah. even proactively like really supports like dual citizenship and so on yeah. in order to establish a wealthy or like uh, across the pond quote unquote uh, diaspora as mm. and influence on those particular countries where they do have uh, a diaspora as well as you know being able to at all times have connections with big business or even governmental positions of people who have both an Israeli passport and a pass and a citizenship of what whatever other country who are in positions of influence or power outside of Israel and yet are Israelis and consider their Israeli quote unquote mm. nationality as their main one even though they are in positions of power in uh, in foreign countries and so on it's a very right. smart move by by the israeli state yeah, yeah uh, denied. exactly right yeah and they try to penetrate as much as they can because they know that they're a relatively small country with without a large influence um again remember when we're, we're left this year we don't believe there, there's no such thing as some like jewish cabal controlling the world this is nonsense Fuck that, uh, it's no. an anti this is an anti-semitic trope that is actually damaging first of all the, the real uh victims of uh, the existence of Israel being Palestinians, uh, as well as um, regular everyday Jews who may see who who might face uh, anti-Semitic uh, attacks or other tropes because of it. No, uh, Israel is basically a you can think of it as a land. Um, what is the fucking ship? The military ship that you can't uh, a warship like a warship in the Carrier, Middle East. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. That you can't sink because it's fucking land. It's it lives and subsides and breathes and it cannot fucking take a step without the United States saying yes, do this and here's the money to do it and here are the guns as well. Uh, the second that that money dries up, the second American uh, uh, support dries up, it ce- it ceases to exist as a country. It's an incredibly fragile st- uh, state. Uh, otherwise, and that's why they hide behind their nuclear weapons that they, by the way, never admitted to, and nobody sanctioned them for. Um, yeah. For a funny little, um, it's a an bit imperial of project, not a Jewish yeah. project, and any exactly criticism right. directed that these are. I mean, these are cliches. I don't even want to say. Yeah. this. I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah, but but you have to because people. There's always an idiot who will misunderstand. Yeah, because I just said, oh, Israel is smart. Uh, like they give dual citizenship, and there's Israelis in other countries that hold key positions of power. As yeah. if I said, oh my God, Jewish bankers control mm-hmm. world. Ah, ah. So if you think that fucking log, if you think that I think that mm-hmm. fucking log off right now. Go fuck exactly. yourself. Yeah. But, but, uh, but go and listen to Lenin's speech on uh, on uh, anti-Jewish pogroms, and listen to his incredibly sober and beautiful take on basically the the, the concept of of that uh, conspiracy bullshit um there are jews who are workers uh with us who uh, sympathize with our movement and are on the correct side of history in their support of palestine uh and then there are others uh, who are not um it has nothing to do with their being jewish there's a little jew who you know like (laughs) kind of invented their whole fucking thing but basically yeah yeah. Um, oh my god um, but to me to me in this in this whole story out of everything which you presented absolutely beautifully what is kind of interesting and kind of a misunderstanding is people's how people get up incredibly baffled by this like mm-hmm. internalized hypocrisy of israeli protesters that are like mm-hmm. you know we are we we see how potentially the government can infringe on our rights so they're intention like so they're like politically conscious enough to understand how this can happen and yeah. yet they do not see the plight of palestinians in the same way people are like how how do you not get this but my man, like the one of the biggest projects of all time, the United States of America, it ran for like 250 fucking years. Even from the get go of the revolution, they were like, yo, like rights, bro. Like they're very important, bro, but only for like this group of people. And those group of people absolutely deep down in their soul knew that they're only talking about the rights of our group of people and not the other mm. ones. And mm. for, for our African-American brothers and sisters, this you know led all the way up until the 60s and 70s when they could start to kind of start to kind of start to equalize with the white man in the fucking country and they're mm. still struggling uh, to this day. Uh, but what, what I'm trying to say is that it's not a historical precedent. It's not something yeah. new. Like exactly. uh, settlers, specifically settlers, uh, looking at themselves as something very different to when it comes to America, imported slaves, but more importantly, the local population which needs to be removed in order to settle, think this way. It is the ideological, like it, it, it is the ideological, uh, what's it called, uh, bedrock of 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 being a settler. With without uh, this belief, your your whole worldview shatters in front of you. The moment you you understand. Uh, the plight of uh, those whose land you are colonizing that mm. moment you you realize like two things either what the fuck am, am i am i doing here rep, quote, quite literally uh 
uh, destroying uh, the the local population, or or you say you know that their plight is my plight and I need to support them in one way or another. So you, mm. you, you ideologically have to lie to yourself, not even lie to yourself. You have to ad- admit to yourself that you do not care. Much more importantly, though, um, and this kind of ties into the previous story is uh, the devil had uh, or the, the the devil lost another one of their life. But sadly, not his last. It was uh, Netanyahu who had a series of fainting spells, um, and they've just kind of tried to basically. I've read the, the the reporting on it, and it's all very nondescript. Like I'm a medical professional, I'm a physician, and when I read it, they're being very vague. <laughs> like they just they mention they call it a transient heart block in some places, which which kind of gives me an idea vaguely of what they mean. You know, but the yeah, doctor sat aside in like 700 NDAs, bro. Of course, yeah, 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 exactly right. By the way, there's been conflicting reports on it and whatnot, and they're like, oh, for 12 seconds, Netanyahu suffered from heart arrhythmia, and then afterwards we gave him a, a what's it called, a pacemaker. It's like, no, no, we didn't give him a pacemaker. We just, int- uh, what's it called, uh, uh, we've introduced a subdermal device. And I'm like, okay, come on, like just, uh, anyways. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sadly, he didn't die, uh, but the, this is the the, the greatest, uh, the greatest uh, tragedy is that if he were to die, then somebody just as bad, if not even worse than him, would very quickly replace him. Um, yeah. So yeah. Benjamin uh, Bolsonaro, yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. What's up oh, with these ri- rightoid fucking monkeys mm. fucking being the sickest people on the planet while, pro- while uh, you know, uh, being the great prophets of strength and power and annihilation of the enemy. It is yeah. always absolutely incredible. It was always absolutely incredible to me that like it's literally historic fact at this point, which by the way, I'm not making fun of this. It is a disability. I'm not even saying it's not a disability, but you have to admit it's funny that Hitler had a micro penis. Like that to me, like- <laughs> Did he really? Yeah, I'm, hold on, hold on, hold on. His, the, they found uh, that his, phys, like, his physician Hitler before he was a leader penis. wrote yes. that he had a micro pee is that so uh, that's completely completely unsurprising oh my god he had he had a uh, one testicle didn't he hold on yeah, yeah. Ti- times has the, has an article titled the moral myth of hitler's deformed genitals fantastic i love I that. a myth okay i don't give a fuck i am i am mm. i am sharing i am what's the, the word propagating this myth i, uh, <laughs> I want everybody he had to a hyperspade this. he had hyperspadia he didn't have micropenis What's hyperspadia? Uh, that that hyper, means micropenis, everyone. Micropenis. No, hypers, hyperspadia. Fascist micropenis immediately. That's what you should associate with. Okay. Uh, you know you know how you know how your urethra opens at the tip of your penis, right? Mm-hmm. If yeah. you have hypospadia, that means that the tip of your the, the urethra opens slightly below the tip of your penis. So when he so when he would piss, it wouldn't go straight; it would go down. down. Right. So he piss on his shoes every ah, time. That's why and also think, also his like mm. his zikhail was also weirder than everybody else's. Mm. You know, he would like push it up <laughs> like his arm. Mm. I guess everybody everything was crooked in this that man, especially his fucking mind. But speaking of uh, speaking of uh, fascists, uh, the far right mm. is on the rise all over <laughs> Europe. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, next step, mm. goose-stepping, and no, I'm not mm. talking about raves. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in recent years, the far-right parties have gained momentum across the continent, the Guardian writes. Italy's government under Giorgia Meloni is uh, further to the right that at any point since the rule of Mussolini, the AFD, recently won a district council election for the first time with more victories, not expected, but like guaranteed to come, Interestingly enough, in Eastern Germany, in mm. France, the perma threat of um, Marine Le Pen presidency mm-hmm. grows with every protest against Macron's government, whether over police violence or pension reform. Far right parties are propping up coalitions in Finland and Sweden. They just won, but did not manage to create a strong enough coalition, at least for now, in Spain. And neo-Nazi groups are definitely growing over in Austria. What I like to call a Caucasoid spring is emerging, and all the left can offer up are fucking social democratic reforms. Heck, even the incredible fervor of the French uprising was criticized by some of the left as being, quote, unquote too much uh the elites my friends are filling the ranks of traditional not as radical as i wish they could be socialist parties uh and it has made them so fucking un 
palatable uh, to the masses that of course a dude or apparently in this case a woman shouting about uh, Le Migrantes uh, which are coming from uh, the place <laughs> where Israel is uh, works uh, you know much uh, much fucking better by the way did you notice like female fascist leaders like slay girl what incredible girl power Hakeem right mm, oh my god absolutely we need more of them to be camp guards we need more of them to be you know uh, in the in the uh, what's it called uh, in the extermination camps we need more of them as agents of capital you know it's that that's the that's what being liberal is all about all right then i can go on to the next one uh and this is a yeah I mean, it's my favorite thing of to see within the u.s biden has recently released or or, or unleashed not unleashed fucking inaugurated i don't know what the right word is and uh, a, a barbenheimer <laughs> exactly no no no, no uh, like, okay that's because that, that, that's cool okay yeah i thought he did a cool thing finally no yeah. no but hold on hold on I just have a little have a listen here biden uh i guess inaugurated a monument to emmett till in the u.s <laughs> And he basically, he made a bunch of lukewarm, limp dick statements about, oh, we need to teach America's racist history um, as he was standing in a room titled the Indian Treaty Room in the White House, which, by the way, every single fucking treaty, by the way, look this up, actually, every single treaty signed with the Native Americans had been broken by the American government, every single one without exception. So that's that, that's all you really need to know about the United States. But let me g- give a little bit of te- detail in case anybody doesn't know. Um, the United States is a massively racist country and not even racist in a, you know, oh, they have some weird like preconce- misconceptions or, or preconceptions about that person of that different color or whatever. No, uh, they had incredibly extensive slavery and then that afterwards basically turned into um, institutionalized racism at every single state uh, and every single level against oh, their really? African population. Oh, really? I didn't population. hear about that. Another America one. America racist? That's strange. No, 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 no. The reason I'm giving this incredibly tired point is because... I thought um, that, I thought 30% of the population just tanned a lot. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're treated the same way like white people. <laughs> no way. <man. laughs> That's fucking stupid. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Thank you. All right, no, hold on, hold on. Um, <laughs> the reason I'm making this very tired statement is because I very recently met up uh, I know, like I spoke with, a, with with somebody of European origin uh, who kind of mentioned in passing how he knew Americans were racist, but he was surprised that black people get killed in the United States because of their race. He thought it was racism like, oh, you know, they have weird food, like, you know, this still stupid, re- still real racism, but a lot more benign, I guess you can you can call it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and the reason I'm specifically saying this is because... More, more like, it, sorry for interrupting you, more like... Uh, uh, he thought it was more like sit on the other side of mm. uh, the train in the metro type of racism. Yeah. Not, ka, 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 ta, 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 type <laughs> exactly of racism. Right. Yeah. Exactly Get down right. on the floor right now, you fucking <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Da, 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 yeah. Da. Okay, yeah, sorry. Exactly yeah. right. Um, Emmett Till, for those who don't know, was a black teenager who in 1955 uh, was murdered brutally. The reasoning, the reason for his murder was because uh, he was standing at the store of uh, at, the, at the doorway of a store, uh, and supposedly a twenty-one year he was fourteen years old at the time. A twenty-one-year-old white woman walked past him, and she claimed that he whistled at her. Uh, which afterwards, uh, a group of much older uh, men uh, essentially surrounded him, beat him, shot him, mutilated him, and murdered him uh, in Mississippi. Uh, this woman, who, by the way, just recently died, may she rest in piss, later on admitted that she lied. Uh, and she lived on this lie for many decades. That resulted in the death of a 14-year-old boy. Um, Even if she didn't lie, he whistled, sorry. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But it's still like, he doesn't matter what the fuck. Like, the very fact that her conscience allowed her to live with that lie for so long before she she got out of, like, you know. And she never saw any, any, any sort of, uh, what's it called? Uh, repercussion. Of course, they're like, oh, she had to live an isolated life because fuck that woman. What? What are you crazy? She resulted in the death of an innocent boy because of bull. She could have just kept her fucking mouth shut. So the man was murdered. The boy, excuse me, the boy was murdered. Uh, as many people of his uh, of, of his uh, heritage are very frequently in the United States. Uh, and this is something that happened over seventy years ago in the United States. And just now, I guess some sort of American. Uh, political establishment is trying to honor him or try to bring some attention to his history. But it's incredibly, um, as is very typical in the United States, it's all, all about the face of things. It's all about how you present things. It's all about, you know, the showmanship of it. Um, we're coming up to an election year and 
Biden, who's the only Democrat that's really running, is not very popular with, with black voters, but he still needs their vote. So this is an incredibly um, transparent attempt at scooping up black votes. That's why he's done more stuff with, 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 with uh, Obama recently as well, trying to fucking ride that horse until, uh, until it fucking dies. Um, and it's just, it's very tiring to see because at the end of the day, instead of dealing with institutional racism that exists within, within the United States, instead of trying to bring in any sort of meaningful uprooting of the system. I don't even want to say reform because it's so baked in at this point. Um, He just takes a picture where he's signing some proclamation to establish uh, Emmett Till, uh, like the Emmett Till National Monument or whatever, surrounded by African-American people. Of course, Kamala Harris is there just smiling with her weird fucking plasticky smile. Um, And a very like curated photo. Of course, there's a woman who's in a wheelchair. There's people of all different shades of African American, by the way, um, behind him, and he's just sitting on the stupid table signing it. I'm surprised he even managed to remember that he's supposed to be sitting and where he's supposed to be sitting and signing. Even it's incredibly performative, and it's very disappointing to see. But then again, what else are you expected to see from the United States? Uh, Do you think that Americans even get it? Like just how like funny this looks like to the rest of us. Like mm. the point that you know, obviously, also stupid. Like, oh, Putin naked rides horse. Such mm. cringe propaganda. Yeah, it is. But like, what your presidents do with this sort of shit, like to the rest of us, looks identical to naked man on horse. Like, yeah. it's so transparent. People, the, what's it called? There's some people there who are, uh, you know, like, oh, America's changing. America's making progress. I'm like, God, ah, fucking, can you please? What can you do? What can you do? <laughs> By the way, you want to know what's the best part? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> I swear to God, it's what year is it? You got Nick. Twenty twenty three. It's twenty twenty three exactly. Do you know what Biden uh, signed last March? What? He signed a law, uh, a bill, uh, named after uh, Emmett Till, which for the very first time in American history makes lynching a federal hate crime. <laughs> 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 you can like what you may as well they shouldn't have they oh may God. as well like you shouldn't have even bothered at this point <laughs> are you fucking serious uh, so yeah i don't know i don't know what to tell you this is uh, like i have nothing else to add it's just it's so pathetic and 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 and, and performative and sad but and- where but, but where where if you if you if you i'm sorry but if you lynch a white dude is mm. it still is it still a race <laughs> I mean, I guess we'll find out when the United States balkanizes, inshallah. I don't know what the time Absolutely. <laughs> oh, my God. Hold on. I'm just going to try to look at the monument. Um, is it just a plaque? Are you kidding me? Is it just a fucking plaque? Is it really a plaque? Uh, no, no. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a vague... Uh-huh. No, no, no. There, there's an actual, like, bronze statuette, uh, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and it's very... It's not very well made. And it's based off of the one picture that exists of him, basically. <laughs> All right. Then. Moving on, on on things that are not hot, but are actually fucking melting us. Preliminary analysis by the World Meteorological Organization, Copernicus Climate Change Service, and Leipzig University indicate that July 2023 is on track to become the hottest month ever recorded on Earth. Earth. Mm. It is likely the hottest in about 120,000 years. I'll ask my grandma if that's correct, because she looks like she's at least 160,000. The first three weeks of July were the hottest on record, and the month is projected to be 0.2 degrees Celsius warmer than the previous warmest July in 2019. This year has seen record-breaking heat waves in various regions worldwide, primarily attributed Mm. to human-induced climate change from burning, guess oh, what? Boy. Fossil fuels. El Nino combined with climate change is expected to lead to more months setting temperature records. July's temperatures are about 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, approaching the warming limit set in the Paris Climate Accord. Urgent and significant reduction in greenhouse gas emissions are necessary, obviously, to combat the consequences of climate change. Hakim, I hear some people have also been dying, right? (laughs) Oh boy, oh boy, hold on, I have a bunch of stories for you. I'm sure people have heard of what happened in Greece with the fires. 
uh, where basically tens of thousands of people were forced to leave their homes. Uh, even people on holiday uh, had to basically abandon their holidays. Uh, as a result of massive fires on Rhodes, on Corfu, and a bunch of other uh, Greek islands. In fact, you can even see from space, there's something called burn scars, where you can basically, on the map, you can see a uh, blackened area of, uh, of, of exactly the amount of damage. It's ridiculous that you can even, that it's even to this this degree. Uh, of course, this is because temperatures have risen to a ridiculous amount. Uh, I think it was around 45 degrees Celsius, uh, which is still like 5 degrees Celsius uh, uh, cooler than than what Iraq is usually <laughs> in the summers. <laughs> Shut the fuck but up! Yeah. Stop flexing. You're like yeah. my Russian Ukrainian friends. Oh, this is not cold. Do you know what cold is? Go fuck yourself. No, no, you're Lord. very right. The... Like a b be, be fucking normal. Like the Bacchus. Literally, the, where, uh, the whole planet will migrate to once everybody starts dying. Four perfectly <laughs> balanced. Four They're... perfectly balanced fucking uh, parts of the year. It is absolutely incredible. Exactly. Right, I'm. I'm very happy for you, Habibi. Do you want to know something? I'm not happy about though. In the in your the client, the, your your air conditioning bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude! Oh, don't even fucking get me started. Goddamn. <laughs> um. Anyways, the uh, what's it called? Um. No, but sorry, sorry. You have, I have to do a side tangent. Yeah, the, like ahead. the number one, like always, which I like to call like sounds racist, but it's more ignorant. Uh, that like on the Balkans, always like almost every grandpa would would do about the Middle East. You know, we're watching some movie, and you know it's in the desert, and like the, the you know, I know you, ex I know you know where I'm going with this, mm -hmm. and everybody's always like, but aren't they fucking hot? Why are they wearing so much shit? <laughs> that is the yeah. number one fucking mm -hmm. thing, and I obviously know the answer. Tell the answer yeah. actually too. To uh, when you wear loose like, fitting clothing, it allows air to circulate better, so in a exactly. way it actually cools you down. Wearing tight clothes in hot areas is the stupidest thing you can fucking do, and that's why people are dying of heat stroke. Do you do you know? Do you think people die of heat stroke in Iraq? No, <laughs> I mean it happens. I'm I'm joking, but it's far less than to British tourists in Spain. Uh, I can tell you that much. Absolutely. Um, so please continue. But, Sorry, yes. my little. Let's explain racism. <laughs> no ignorance. Whatever yeah. the fuck. Okay, please continue. Uh, you got me, please. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna squeeze at your um, what's it called? Your your advertiser brain for a little bit. You know they've set up like temporary centers for people whose homes have been destroyed or who had to basically run away from the fire so they can sleep there temporarily. You know, as just a uh, shelter. Mm -hmm. And the walls are plastered with fucking Pepsi and water bot like bottled water ads. In these brilliant. <laughs> that's absolutely brilliant. No, that's what we're gonna do. Like in the future, you know what I want to brand? Mm. Uh, like the uh, the the firefighter planes that throw water on <laughs> uh, on fire. If that doesn't make you fucking thirsty, I don't know what will. Just Coca Cola up that whole fucking thing. Like literally, Coca Cola should buy firefighter pl uh, firefighter planes and just completely cover it in Coca Cola. And to make it even like for people watching on TV, to make them even thirstier, I say don't don't throw water on the forest fires. Throw ice. So it literally <laughs> looks like ice coming out of a Coca Cola can. <laughs> fucking incredible, man. Yeah, you, you're you're, uh, you're talented with this fucking nonsense. I I can't. Uh, Talented also uh, severely demonic. demented. I know. I'm, jo I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, please do not do this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but if you yeah. do this, I want to percent. It's my fucking idea. Exactly right. Uh, what's it called? The, the it's been a beyond like the pale. It's completely clear that this is this event has occurred because of climate change, as induced by the use of fossil fuels, the continued use of industry, the fact that the United States military is the largest polluter on earth, all this fucking nonsense. And my farts, you should see how much I fart. Yeah. And my farts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a beating a dead horse. Um, around 40 people have died between Algeria, Italy, and Greece um, because of the uh, because of these fires. And specifically, Algeria and Tunisia are being incredibly damaged by this. Yeah. The, the, the heat waves are ridiculous. Do you want to know some, some other strange area of the world that's also experiencing these? Northeast Austria. For some reason, like all, all of Central Europe is fine, but Northeast Austria is in. <laughs> I don't. Don't ask me why. <laughs> nah, karma for uh, World War Two. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Oh my God! Uh, I'm sorry. Like after <laughs> I said that, I was like, Jesus Christ. No, no, you're right. You're right. Switching from extremely important topics of conversation, such as our planet uh, being on fire, we move to something that might not be on fire, but being something that is absolutely fucking lit, which <laughs> is Barbenheimer. By, by, I, I never <laughs> learned how to properly pronounce it. Barbenheimer or yeah. Open Barbie, whatever the fuck. Uh, absolutely triggering the living shit out of conservatives. 
I know this isn't really fucking news, but I think it was worth mentioning. Bench B Boy is having his whole, uh, you know, women don't. My my wife told me women don't actually always get wet when having sex. Uh, mm. Part two. Uh, the dude went to like uh, the gayest ultra gay fucking gay ultra gay 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 fucking mm. movie of all time fucking Barbie everything is fucking pink you fucking dumb fuck and you know mm. obviously got triggered about how oh my god there's uh, fucking trans people in this thing Blah. but also <laughs> the, the wildest fucking thing that I've seen you know conservatives getting uh, triggered about is actually some conservative lawmakers like these people are fucking government bro that claim that Hollywood is trying to manipulate the American public with Chinese propaganda in a movie about dolls specifically Barbie they argue that a cartoon map in the film depicts China's nine dash line used to assert <laughs> control over the South China Sea like I don't do drugs but whatever you guys are doing fucking mail it to everybody on planet earth that shit must be popping the fuck off I don't know how boring their fucking lives are I don't know how many like Hitler like micro penises I'm sticking to this they fucking mm-hmm. have for them to need to fucking obsess about this shit but uh, the only thing I can say is that they're with every comment they're motivating me more and more to watch Barbie but uh, also my fucking girlfriend is fucking inflating my head I love that fucking Sopranos meme uh, mm-hmm. where uh, one of the characters is like going to, to the cinema with his girlfriend and like uh, give me two tickets uh, oh hey give me two tickets for I don't know why I'm being British now give me two tickets for for Oppenheimer mm. and the tickets for for that woke pink bullshit. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm definitely watching both. But yeah, that is, I don't I don't care if the movie is good or it sucks dick. Uh, it's already good in my book when it made fucking Ben Shabibo have a wet ass pussy part two moment. Beautifully, beautifully delivered. Um, how about we end this off on some good news? This is something that just recently happened, but it's it's been going on for a while. Like the the, the background of it, um, you got late. It, Fuck yeah, bro! <laughs> <laughs> that was the timing was too good. I'm sorry. Yeah. After. Oh my god! Hold on. Let's let's uh, let me just deliver this this uh, beautiful morsel to you. You up I think you'll appreciate this even more than JT. Um, uh, so a court in the U.S. recently basically high uh, handed down, I guess, the highest sentence it could uh, to a guy involved in a movement called or a fundraising uh, movement called We Build the Wall, uh, which was a fundraising campaign uh, which was supposed to support uh, the attempts of of uh, Trump. Uh, and his wanting of you know his desire to build the wall with with Mexico, uh, they basically tried to do a uh, you know GoFundMe or like a Kickstarter thing for it. Uh, the guy who who started it, an absolute chad by the name of Timothy Shia, uh, he got five years in prison, five years and three months, uh, because he defrauded hundreds of thousands of donors. So worth it. <laughs> so fucking worth it. I'm a lady. From years yeah. of smile. And basically, well, so what happened is he set up a bullshit like charity thing, like fundraising event, uh, <laughs> and he received a total of around twenty five million dollars from a bunch of like Trump supporting people, hoping that this is going to go to building a fucking wall. When instead, it just went directly to this guy. Um, I absolutely, absolutely love it. Uh, it's a bit unclear from the the sources I've read if he genuinely does did want to build the wall or if he just instead of. Divi- diverting all the in, uh, in, uh, all the money towards that purpose, he took a substantial part of it to himself. Uh, it's not exactly clear. Uh, if he is a Trumper kind of guy and he just decided to be a bit corrupt and take some money for himself, well, this is just a snake eating its own ass at this point. Um, yeah. But yeah. if he really was uh, uh, a Sigma Chad and just wanted to defraud a bunch of <laughs> Trump supporters uh, from their bullshit racist nonsense, uh, then that would be pretty neat. Um, of course, the 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 the, the judge that uh, oversaw a sentence said that this erodes the public's faith in the political process which is there even any political faith in the political political process in the US who knows but yeah th- th- there you go uh, a bunch of people dumbasses sent some money to have a a wall built and they lost it to some dude who I don't know used it to get a fucking jacuzzi installed it in his second home uh, so why not? incredibly <laughs> heartwarming but, incredibly yeah. heartwarming it gives me ideas even so let hear the pitch so a complete ripoff of alex jones we just do alex jones right mm. insane right wing uh, conspiracy theories but we give 95 percent of our money to uh buy weapons for communist guerrillas 
So we literally just sit there and scream slurs and like, ah, we're gonna fucking da, 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 build them walls. And then you just uh, siphon all that money from dumbass conservatives and uh, you buy AKs. Sounds like a plan. You wanna do this? Fuck this, the program shit. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Wait, tomorrow, who posts the why I stop being a leftist uh, first? <laughs> Me or you? Oh my God. Uh, I, you know what? I'm gonna have to sit there. You know, actually, I would probably get it out before you would. You're gonna, you're gonna want to sit there and the, uh, develop the argument. I'm just gonna be like, fuck it. I just need, I, I need to yeah, pay my, my editor. upload <laughs> fucking schedule. Yeah, mm. you're gonna be like, dude, where the fuck is that? Like three months later, man, I needed to like get it right. <laughs> uh, with all of this being said, uh, we would very much like to thank our patrons without whom this wouldn't be possible um so thank you to everybody who supports us on the patreon of every tier but especially our heavy tiers uh who we chat with monthly and have very fun discussions uh, and likewise um receive many special uh, bonuses from bonus episodes to a bunch of other interesting stuff and some some things coming down the line um so you should uh, keep an eye out for that uh for for some announcements uh, soon of course, please do check out the merch. Uh, check out First Thought, which is kind of like a shortened, more condensed, and more, uh, I guess, streamlined uh, and delivered uh, format. Without of this. is sperm uh, actually pissed. <laughs> exactly, without sperm yeah. discussion, sadly. Which it um, is. Which you and need Hitler to learn. did have a micro penis. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Uh, with all that being said, this has been this program. I'm Hakim. I'm Yugopnik, and yes, yes, <laughs> Hitler did have a micro penis. And he pissed on his shoes. <laughs> <laughs>